do you use them for? Physics. Physics classes have them. Anybody else use them for something different? Yeah, engineering. Yeah, the, a lot of the engineering classes run into vectors. Anybody else? I had a pilot one semester. He told me they use them all the time to get themselves from one place to another. So vectors, you, the place where I ran into vectors most often was in my physics classes. But that's because I didn't take any engineering and I don't fly anything. It's probably a safe fit, safest way to go. So we're not going to get to all of those applications of vectors. We're just going to hit the highlights so that once you get to a physics class, you will have seen these before and they won't be that surprise, surprising to you or in your engineering classes. A lot of people figure this is the first class you will likely see them in and then you move on and actually do the applications and more with them. So, vectors are basically, what do they look like? This them. Well, basically it's like, remember rays in geometry? Well, it kind of looks like a ray in that it has a starting point called the initial point or, yeah, initial point. And it goes off in some direction with an arrow, but the arrow's on the end. So there's an ending point. Now it can be anywhere in the coordinate plane, and it can point any direction. So what we need to be able to do in order to make it easier to deal with them is to put a vector in rectangular coordinates. In terms of these things that we refer to as i and j for vectors, what that means is we take the initial point and we move it to the origin every time. And, but the vector is still the same length and points in exactly the same direction as it did wherever it was before. So by, by putting it in this way, essentially what we're talking about is it starts at 0, 0, and where it ends are its x and y coordinates. Well, the x coordinate goes in front of the thing that has an i, in front of the i, and the y coordinate goes in front of the j. But once we put them all in the same place, then we can talk about um, an easy way to find the magnitude. Magnitude is the same thing as how long it is, so it's the length of the vector or a distance thing. We can add and subtract them, which you can use to figure out, you know, if you're going here and here, what is you, you know, what, what, so you've got a force that goes, what was it, a force that goes this way and another one that's coming this way, you know, which one wins out and by how much. That's the adding and subtracting. Well, actually, that's probably subtracting and adding. It's just that they're both going in the same direction. We can multiply vectors by a scalar number, just a number. You know, it's like, okay, I want my vector to be three times as big. So, multiply times three. We can find something called the unit vector. In other words, that is a vector that is of length one that is the same direction as our other vector was, our original vector. The thing that completely gets hidden in the unit vector is how long the original vector was. And then using magnitude and direction, we can write our vectors in terms of i's and j's. Now you may wonder why we throw all this in here. Because when you look at the rectangular coordinate stuff, this looks just like all the stuff we had before, yeah? So if we start at x1, y1, and our terminal point is x2, y2, then we can always rewrite our vector in, in our rectangular coordinates by taking the end point minus the beginning point for x and putting that in front of the i, and taking the end point minus the beginning point for the y and putting that in front of the j. That had nothing to do with trace. Not yet. Okay. This is why I said vectors are really easy. Now, for magnitude. Magnitude, I told you, was the length of the vector. Well, basically, it uses the distance formula. So this is the end point minus the beginning point squared for the x's, plus the end point minus the beginning point squared for the y's, and you take the square root of it. And how do we indicate magnitude? Well, we have this thing that looks similar to an absolute value, except it's double y instead of singles. And I'm guessing, in, can you guys see this okay? All right. I was going to say, usually it's Brendan, uh, not Brendan, uh, Devin who can't see it, but she scooted over a little. Which I'll be clear now. Now, that magnitude form. 
formula is the one that is given in the book. But it's kind of misleading because most of the time when you are asked to find the magnitude of a vector, you are not going to have the initial point and the terminal point. So once we put our vector in rectangular form, we usually would write it as some number i plus some number j, where a and b are the x and y coordinates of the terminal point on the vector. So the way we got a was to do x2 minus x1. <coughs> yes? Well, that's this thing right here. So the magnitude of the vector, when we get it in our more standard form, because we usually get them already in rectangular form, would be a squared plus, well, what was this? Well, that's just our b. That's how we got our b. b squared under the square root symbol. So more often than not, this is the version of the magnitude formula that you're going to use, not this one. All right, let's see what's next. Got more formulas? No. We've added some examples. We want to write the vector b, which has an initial point of 2, negative 9, and a terminal point of 5, negative 6 in rectangular coordinates. Okay. So, how do I get the a? What do I do? No, it's not five. This is the, it, the terminal point when it's in standard position. This one's not in standard position because its uh, initial point is not zero, zero. So we need to move it to standard position first. That's what we're doing here is putting it in standard position, basically. So how do I get there? All right, you're going to make me go backwards, aren't you? All right, how do I get my A that goes in front of I? I subtract 5 minus 2. I subtract my X's. My end X minus my beginning X, 5 minus 2, and then I put in my I. All right, how do I get my B? Negative 6 minus negative 9, and then I put that in front of my j. So that will give me 3i plus 3j. There are way too many negatives in there. I'm sitting there. Yes, 3. That wasn't hard, right? What? That's it. That's our met. I mean, that's our. So I said 5. I was going to say five minutes. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. 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 All right, now you get to do this one yourself. Three minus three, I plus negative one minus six, J. That will give us zero I, so I don't have to write it, plus a negative seven J, so just negative seven J as my answer. By the way, in web work, the way these are set up is they say, okay, B is equal to blank I plus blank J. You would have to fill in the zero here, and you'd have to remember the negative here. Which way is this vector pointing? Now, straight down, when it is put into your rectangular coordinate system with um, initial point at zero, zero, this is pointing straight down the y-axis. 